information, I'm about to read you a classic tale of terror by Edgar Allan Poe. Wait a minute. That's a school book. Don't worry, Bart. You won't learn anything. Named after a large black bird, it's one of the most well-known works of poetry in the English language. A drink to any man in this room who can finish this line. Quote the raven. Never more. Ah, ah. It is a very favorite poem. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and in this installment of Mojo Notes, we'll be exploring 10 things you should know about Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. And forget this lost Lenore. Never more. Number 10, about the author. Born in 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts, Edgar Allan Poe was brought up by a Scottish merchant after his father's departure and his mother's death. His university career was cut short due to money problems and followed by a brief army stint. Poe then struggled to make a living through his writing. I'm broke. Then try writing another telltale heart. People love blood. They love death. Even the Raven's popularity couldn't keep him afloat. He died shortly after its publication from unknown causes in 1849 at the age of 40. And in parting from you now, thus, much let me avow, you are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Number 9. Influences and Inspirations It's a raven called Grip from Charles Dickens' 19th century novel Barnaby Rudge, A Tale of the Riots of 80, that's believed to have inspired Poe's narrative poem. Referencing folk and classical work, Poe also used rhythm, meter, rhyme, and alliteration to craft the raven's musical tone. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on that pallid bust of palace just above my chamber door. Number eight, settings and era. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. The poem takes place on a December night in the home of the narrator. Darkness there, and nothing more. Its dark and eerie mood is enhanced by the entrance of a raven, which answers each of the narrator's contemplations with the phrase, nevermore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quote the raven, nevermore. It's due to this cryptic response that he assigns supernatural properties to the bird. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quote the raven, nevermore. Number seven, plot. The raven's plot revolves around a man trying to get over the death of a woman named Lenore. Nameless here forever. His reading is interrupted by a winged visitor, which raps at his window and enters his chamber to sit on a statue of Pallas Athena. After discovering the raven can speak, the narrator begins to ask it questions about life and his lost love. Tell this soul with sorrow laden if, within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. However, the bird's constant repetition of nevermore makes him go so crazy that he concludes his soul will never be free. Number six, the narrator. While I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping. Not much is known about the narrator, but what is known is that he's a man who's lost the woman he loves. The most popular belief holds that he's a young student who feels very strong emotions towards Lenore. Quaff this kind of envy and forget this lost Lenore. Quote the raven, nevermore. Number five, the raven. While the narrator is mourning his loved one, the stately raven taps at his window and perches himself upon a bust of Pallas just about his chamber door. With its fiery eyes, the ebony feathered bird's facial expression is serious and firm. Associated with the forces of darkness, the raven also has the ability to speak, but nevermore is the only word it mysteriously knows how to say. Take thy beak from off my heart, and take thy farm from off my door, quoth the raven. Nevermore. 
Number four, values and themes. The Raven's main theme is the narrator's endless dedication to the late, beautiful woman he loves. It deals with the experiences of guilt and grief while he tries to simultaneously remember and forget Lenore. Eagerly, I wished the morrow. Vainly, I had sought to borrow. From my books, so ceased of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. But his emotions, along with the Raven's negative declarations, eventually drive him to madness. Number three, symbols. As December has been historically linked to the powers of evil and darkness, it's fitting that Poe chose to set the Raven in this month. But the poem's key symbol is obviously the Raven, which was selected because it has the ability to speak, but lacks reasoning. Its black feathers also represent death, which serves as a contrast to the white palace Athena statue, which represents wisdom. Number two, literature adaptations. Though parodies of the Raven surfaced as early as the 1850s, the poem continues to be satirized in the 20th century and beyond, whether in Mad Magazine, Walt Disney's Comics and Stories, or Calvin and Hobbes. James Russell Lowell referenced it in his own poetry, while horror writer Stephen King and English author Neil Gaiman mentioned Ravens more than once. The list goes on. Number one, screen adaptations. Quoth the Raven. Eat my shorts. Go! The Raven's pop culture influence extends to multiple songs, video games, and even a pro wrestler with the ring name Raven. While many television shows have cited Poe and his Black Bird, the poem may be most famous for its presence in big screen adaptations. While it's found a place in films like The Crow, You heard me rapping, right? The Page Master, <laughs> and The Expendables. It's also served as the base of a 1915 silent film and a 2012 thriller of the same name, both of which included actor portrayals of Poe himself. Did that marsupial of an editor dare to change my review again? I told him not to touch it. I told him, Mr. Poe. Where's my review? Where is it? Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite piece of the Raven trivia? For more informative top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore.